everyone. Welcome to episode 32 of the Airy Nibs podcast. My name is Ariel, and this is a video podcast where I talk about all things knitting, sometimes crochet things, and sometimes sewing things, but mostly knitting, lots of yarn things, and yeah. So today it is Saturday, June 3rd, so happy June, everyone. I cannot believe that we are already in the month of June. This year is really crazy. Time is just going by so fast. But that also means a lot of knitting has happened. So I am very excited to share that all with you. And I'll just get started. So I am wearing a finished object. And so I will talk about it now. I am so excited about it. It was actually pretty much finished last week. Like the knitting part of it was finished, but I didn't weave in the ends and I didn't block it yet. But it is finally like done, done. We've the ends are weaved in and it was blocked and it's perfect. I love this so much. So this is the No Sweatshirt by Park Williams, Park and Knit on Instagram. And I am just so happy with it. I have been wearing it every day since I finished blocking it and it's just so comfortable. The yarn I used for this is Willberry Fiber Co in the Berry Natural DK base in the colorway Mornings at the Coffee Shop which is a variegated color, as you can see. And I knit size extra small. I used US 5 needles. I believe I sized down one needle size for this to make gauge. And then after blocking my final measurements at like the, the circumference, and there's decreases on the body. So this is at like the biggest circumference of the body it is 37 inches and that gives me seven inches of positive ease it is a tad bigger than the actual like pattern measurements i think for size extra small it says it should be 35 inches but mine's is 37 so that's just something to let you guys know just in case you're wondering if the size is my end result size and the pattern size is different but i will stand up so you can kind of see this it is a slightly cropped hoodie and so it I'm wearing high-waisted shorts right now but I think and I also did as far as modifications I did lengthen the body to be a little bit longer and I also there's decreases in the body but I kind of spaced them out so that it wouldn't like rapidly decrease so I did lengthen it just a little bit but I would still say it's cropped and I love the length of the sleeves it came out perfectly I love the length when I'm holding my arm out that it just goes slightly like past my wrist. I really, really love that length. I think it looks really cute. And I love the drawstring here and the hood. This is the first time I have knit something with a hood. And so I think that, that is really cute. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's too hot to like wear a hood on my head right now, but it's so cute. I did the rounded hood version. There's like a pointed hood version in the pattern, but this is the rounded hood. And it looks so good. And I'm really happy with it. And then I'm trying to think what else here. I, uh, I don't know. I just really like it. In the very natural DK base, it is so soft. I kind of want to make another one of these in a solid color and probably if I can like in the Woolberry natural decay base again because I just really like how it feels and I did so if you don't know about this pattern it is designed to be reverse stockinette so that if I move closer to the camera so that the pearl side is the right side out and I think for, for my own personal taste, I feel like I was a bit worried about it. Like I wasn't sure if I would like how it looks, but I think for variegated colors, it makes it look a lot, like I really like how it looks on variegated colors because, and like for tonal colors, it'll look fine too, but especially for variegated, I feel like the pearl side looks really nice because it kind of gets rid of that like stripe stripiness that sometimes variegated colors can kind of create and I just yeah I think it blends really well I did 
alternate skeins for parts of this. I did talk about this in last week's video. Uh, but yeah, I basically alternated skeins for the body and and for the hood. But I think overall, like it, everything looks really well kind of like incorporated. Like there's not really that much color pooling. And if there is, it's just very slight. Like I'm very, very happy with how this all kind of came out and how it looks all together. So the no sweatshirt, I'm really happy that it's done and it's still, I'm glad the weather is cooperating. I feel like I might sound like a broken record now because I keep talking about the weather, but I am just holding on to that cold weather to wear all of my long sleeve mitts. So I've just been wearing this and it's been really comfortable. So yeah, so that is the no sweatshirt. It is one of my finished objects and I actually have a second finished object. I just finished knitting it this morning. It is not blocked, but I also, this morning, I also like finished weaving in the end. So all it needs is blocking. And I am the type to, I like to weave in ends before blocking. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. But I can't believe I did it all this morning. So I finished this. It is the Stripey Turtle Tank pattern by Emily Curtis. And I am so, so happy with it. I was really very much in the zone this week about working on this and wanting to finish it and right now I am very like I really want to make all of the summer knits and just like tank tops and stuff and so I just yeah I really really wanted this finished object and so I finished it and I for the yarn for this I'm really happy with how the colors and the stripes came out for this I think it's so cute and spring summery kind of colors and it's, I feel like it's very me, and I really, really like that. So for the yarn, I used all Woolberry Fiber Co. yarn. The main color, which is this creamy white color, is the Berry Cashmere Base in the colorway White Way of Delight, which is from the Anne collection from Woolberry. And then the five different colored stripes I used for this were five of the minis from the Anne collection. And so all of the yarn I use here is from the Anne collection by Woolberry. And I always, I really just like using yarn and colorways from the same collection in one project. Like I feel, it just feels like cohesive. And you know, I feel pretty confident that they will all kind of work well together. And so, yeah, it just makes me really happy. I made size 3 of the Stripey Turtle Tank and I used US 3 needles which I believe is the recommended needle size and yeah so this is what it looks like. I do of course need to block it so you know some things are still kind of rolling up but I will definitely block it before next video. That is the plan anyway. And it's so cute! So. Yeah, I'll hold it up so you can see the stripe colors maybe a little bit better because some of them are low contrast to the main color. But I basically used a green, a yellow, a lavender purple, a dusty rose color, a really light pink. And yeah, those are the five different colors. It looks so cute. I'm really happy with it. And then just to show where I was from last week, I've been trying to remember to put stitch markers in for projects so that I can actually show like how much progress I've made in the week. So last time, last week, I talked about it, I was here. It's worked bottom up and so I was about here last week and so I finished the body and then did the fronts and the back, did the finishings and so yeah, so that is this. Can you believe I weaved in all the ends this morning? It was a lot of ends, but I know that you can do like the, there's like, forget what the method name is called to do like weave in ends while you're knitting, but I just, I don't know. I, maybe one day I'll try it, but I very much just prefer weaving in ends, which sounds kind of weird because I don't like weaving in ends, but yeah, so this is the side that all the color changes happen. I think it looks fine looks fine it's under the arm so you know you're not really gonna see it 
and yeah so many ends but I'm really ha happy that I just like knocked it out and that it's done so that is the stripy turtle tank I have plans for a second one and I have like literally the yarn I yeah my second stripy turtle tank I'm also going to use all colors from the Woolberry and collection as well but just different colors so I have another full skein of it's like a dark brown and then I have four more of the minis that you know part of the mini set there were nine and so I used five for this one and I'm going to use the other four for a second stripy turtle tank that's the plan so I'm pretty sure I will make the same size I know that this is probably the the patterns recommends for sizing to have negative ease but I'm pretty sure this might give me like an inch of positive ease or I think it does give me positive ease but and then I'll block it and measure it and let you all know final measurements next time but I I'm still not sure about how I feel about negative ease I definitely prefer positive ease even for like tank tops and stuff so Still trying to figure out what is my preference for tank tops, but I am very much a positive ease type of person, so we'll see. But it's so cute. I'm really happy with it. So my first but not last stripy turtle tank, here it is. And yeah, so that's this, my second finished object for the week. And then I have just lots of lots more progress to show you on other things that I've already talked about. So I hope this isn't too boring, but I'll, yeah, just showing progress on some things that I've worked on. There is one new cast on, which I did talk about that I was going to cast on last week. So I'll save that for the end. But let's, let's start with progress on my big cozy cardi so like I said last time I'm just really at this point trying to make sure I get I get in some kind of progress every week on this because it is just it is a ginormous project like I I know I knew that the big cozy cardi was a big project and going to be a lot of knitting but that was also the case for my birch pullover like that's also a lot of knitting but for some reason that didn't feel birch pullover was fine to knit. I didn't feel... I feel more strongly about the Big Cozy Cardi being a lot of knitting than I do about the Birch Pullover. I don't know stitch-wise if that is like accurate, but yeah, this one is really getting me. So anyway, here's what I have so far. It looks like so much, and it is, but I'm not, I'm not that close. So I'm over halfway, but I think I said that last week also. So this is how much I have. And honestly, like this is all I worked on this past week. But you know, if I keep doing at least this amount or just, you know, I, as long as I work on it a little bit every week, at some point I'm gonna finish it, right? So yeah, so I, I just worked a few rows. It might be like eight rows, maybe a little more than eight rows maybe an inch and a half so here it is I mean it's looking great I think it, it looks great the color of the yarn looks great and the stitch pattern it's just but it's just massive but I am I am liking how it's turning out so far so that's my quick update on the big cozy cardi if you haven't heard me talk about this before the yarn I am using is La Bien Ame or La Bien Amy merino twist base in the colorway Jinju and I am making size one and I am using US three size needles for this. Okay and then I have another update on a project which is not too much of an update but I figured you know why not to show all the updates even if it's not that much so this is my good willow by Allison Cripps and I just worked on, I'm still working on my first sleeve and this is my progress stitch marker. So I've only, I've only worked also just a very minimal amount of rows here, but again, just showing progress, this, just to show, you know, sometimes, sometimes you can only 
or yeah, sometimes, you know, you just make little progress and it's okay. So yeah, so I just made a few rows here on the sleeve. But I do feel like at some point I am going to feel like let's just knock out a sleeve and I'll be able to finish a sleeve pretty quickly. So just kind of waiting for that day, but in the meantime, just like slowly working on it. And then, but yeah, this is going to be great. I do feel like since this is a very lightweight sweater, at least because I'm using a fingering weight yarn to make this, that it'll still possibly be wearable if I finish this soon-ish. So that's some kind of incentive for me to finish it soon. And yeah, so for the yarn, I am using Olivia and Oliver Fibers in the colorways Burnt Umber for the main color and then Pink Marble for the color work section. And both in the classic sock base. And I just I love how the colors look. I am making size 2 and I'm using US 4 needles. And this is because... Uh, so I sized down my needles, I believe, and I am making size 2, but I'm hoping to get the measurements of size 1 just because my gauge is smaller than the gauge in the pattern because I sized down and used a fingering weight yarn. But I, you know, still really happy with how it's looking. Oh, I know. I think last time I said I was going to steam block it or something so that I can kind of get a better idea on sizing of it because since it's ribbed it kind of you know it's squished but once blocking it'll open up with wise so maybe I'll remember to do that this coming week but that is the good willow there's some small progress on that and then I have I have some progress on my Straya which is another pattern by Andrea Mary and right now I am just working on the body so, here is what it looks like as of now, and I don't have a stitch marker on here for progress, but I remember that last time I showed it, I only worked this first dark blue stripe under the arm, and under the arm? Under the arm, wait, I kind of feel, okay, you know why? It's because I thought I was going to say, I was saying the word yarn, but it was arm. Anyway. Under the arm, I only worked last week up to like this dark blue <laughs> stripe color and now I have almost three. Like the purple, so I worked the light blue, the red, and now I have the purple like on the needle right now. So I've made, I've made some progress and it's looking real cute. I'm loving the yarn, I'm loving the stripe colors and how it's all looking together. I think it's going to be a really cozy cardigan to wear over just like everything. And yeah, so for the yarn for this, I am using ampersand fibers for the main color in the Caslon fingering base and the color is called Oat01 really 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 like this color and I really like how this the ampersand fiber yarn feels and then for the stripes I am using Explore Knits minis in all of the Seattle tonal colorways which is just so cute together so I'm very much enjoying this like I said in the last video I kind of feel like I'm in like a striping kind of mood because you know the shraya is striped and then I made the stripey turtle tank and I want to make another one so yeah I'm very much just just liking this so yeah and then I am making size one and I'm using US two needles to make this oddly enough okay so since I just finished making the birch like right after I finished making the birch pullover which it's another pattern by Andrew Mowry, if you don't know, and it is also in this Half Fisherman's Rib stitch. I waited to finish the birch before I cast on the Straya, but since the Straya is worked flat because it's a cardigan, there is, I feel like it's a lot easier and probably faster to knit than the birch because instead of having, so like every other row, you have to 
in the round you have you there's a row of all pearls like every other row you have to pearl everything but worked flat you knit everything so there's you knitting flat you there's no rows where you have to pearl everything which is really great so I feel like this will probably feel like it'll go by faster although I am assuming that the sleeves are working the round so you will have to pearl every other row which is fine because I made the birch so it's not you know to me I'm like I already did it so it's it's, it's okay um, but yeah I feel like working on the body for this doesn't feel as bad because yeah there is no all pearl round there's a knit row so yeah it's been going good I will say though for some reason I my hands kind of hurt when I work on this too long and I don't know what it is because I am using yeah I'm using US 2 size needles when I made the birch I used US one and a half needles so that was smaller so it's not it can't be because the needle size is so small so I have no idea what it is I also would have thought that purling would hurt my hands more than knitting and there's less purling in this project so I don't know why my hands hurt uh, when I work on this too long but that could maybe possibly make it make it uh, take me longer to finish this but we'll see but yeah when my hands hurt I just you know give this a break and kind of move on to something else yeah still making progress I feel like stripes on projects also make it easier to kind of like keep on going because you want to kind of like see the next stripe or if you're really close to adding the next stripe color you're like oh just work a little more get to the stripe and then finish and yeah it's also easier to see progress on because you visually have the stripes to look to look at but it's really cute really happy really excited so yeah just some quick progress on my Astraya and then I also have I made a lot of progress on this camisole can you guess which one it is oh yeah that red looks great on camera okay this is the sunset camisole by Sarah Nordland and if you've seen my other episodes I have I actually test knitted this and used a different yarn so you know my test knit version is finished but I wanted to make another one I feel like this might be one of the quickest like in between making a second version of something it, this might be like the quickest turnaround time but I really wanted to make this I am planning on making this for flock which is the yarn festival that's going to be in Seattle in August so yeah I started on it I last week I only had two triangles I believe and so for progress, I finished, you know, the other triangles, connected them, and I started working on the body and made pretty good progress. And yeah, oh, last time I was filming in a different room that didn't have like natural sunlight coming in. And so all the colors were not like quite accurate. And so I'm happy this week that you can actually see, you know, colors better, I feel like yeah so it's going great I feel like I made lots of progress on this at the beginning of the week and then I moved on to my other projects this is this good progress I let's see yeah so if you're wondering the yarn I am using is Explore Knits in the Denali sock base in the colorway Pike Place which is just an amazing red I was very probably you could tell in the last video that I was unsure about knitting something with such a bright red like maybe it's not even that bright as far as like how bright reds can be but for me and my wardrobe this is a very bright red but after knitting it up and seeing it like this like it looks so cute so summery so fun and really excited to have this as a finished object and I am Knitting size 2 this time. Last time I made size 1. This time I'm making size 2. I'm using the same size needles though. I'm using US 2 needles. And that is because my gauge for this and because the pattern 
calls to use a sport weight yarn, but this is a fingering weight yarn, and so I, I believe, did I size, I must have sized down the needles as well from what the pattern suggests. And so measurements for this will be smaller than what the size two says, but I am following the instructions for size two. So we'll see how that turns out, but I think it's, it's looking real cute so far. I can't wait to add, if you haven't seen the sunset camisole pattern, like it has, it is pretty much a basic camisole, like with the triangles and it's A-line, so there's increases on the body, but kind of the biggest design element of it that really got me is that there's a ruffle that goes diagonally across the front, and so I'm really excited to get to that part and just see like that red ruffle on this. So that's really exciting. And I'll probably work on this some more this coming week because yeah, I started it, started it and kind of worked on it, but yeah, I kind of stopped working on it towards the end of the week, but that's because I was working on my stripy turtle tank. So now that that's done, I could work more on this or I could cast on something new. But anyway, I'm really loving how this is turning out. So, and it's really fun to look at. So I've been really enjoying that. Lots of progress on this. And then the last work in progress I have to show is a new cast on from last week, but I did talk about it. So this is the Luna T. Let me just rearrange this real quick so I can show it to you. Okay, I think it's, I think this is the front. Okay, this is, ooh, okay. I ran, I only have, okay, let me just make sure, I didn't wanted to make sure that the stitch, stitches on the sleeves didn't come off of the stitch holder. But yeah, so this is the Luna T. It is a pattern by Carissa or Teresa, cl.knits on Instagram. And I've been wanting to make this top for so long, so I'm really happy to finally have it on my needles. And the yarn I am using is Woolberry Fiber Co. Can you tell I love Woolberry yarn? In the Berry Merino base in the colorway Pig Patootie, which is from the Caboose collection. And because I am going to flock, I am going to, well, I'm making this to wear to flock. And... If you're wondering how I got this yarn so quickly, it's because Woolberry said that if you are going to flock and you're planning on making something with the Caboose Collection yarn, then to just let her know uh, which yarn you're going to use to make, you know, something with for flock. And because she wanted to make sure that we all got it with enough time to knit something with it for flock in August. And so, yeah, so I did get the pig patootie yarn started working on it and yeah so I have a good amount of this done and this is how much I worked on the body so far and I am making size one I am using US 6 needles I believe that that is what the pattern like that is the recommended needle size for this pattern and I funny story so when I actually like connected under the arms and started working the body and I was like oh yeah I am not going to do any you can you have an option to do decreases for the body so that is kind of more of a form-fitting top but I didn't want to do decreases for the body because I prefer I prefer to have positive ease around like my stomach area so I didn't want to do decreases, so I was just knitting flat. And I might have gotten maybe like up to here under the arms before I realized I completely missed a step to do uh, short rows so that the neck part gets raised because there's, yeah. Because I, if you've knit other patterns, like if you, you know, knit garments, there's usually like short rows so that the back neck part will raise up and that can either be done you know up top or he, up up top at the I guess at the neck area or sometimes done under the arms and I completely missed that step so I had to rip back do that shaping and then you know just redo all of that which was fine I didn't 
I'm so glad I caught it before I just like finished knitting the body because that would have been really painful to have to like undo or maybe at that point I would just consider just like you know keeping it as is but I'm glad I caught it early so that I could just rip it rip it out and kind of make sure I do that but yeah so now I'm back on track but I am not doing any body shaping any body decreases for the side so I'm just working flat or straight down for the body for this so yeah just gonna keep on doing that and then also I love that I have like stayed away from alternating skeins for projects because I you know I honestly as long as even if you can kind of see it I'm not really that bothered by it unless it's like really bad but usually I'm not that bothered but this time I think because I discovered helico knitting that it makes it so easy to alternate skeins that it's just not really a that much of a problem anymore I still don't know the best way to do helico knitting if you have to do like increases and decreases or something like that but if you're working just like in the round helico knitting so easy to alternate skeins and so I actually have been alternating skeins for this project and I'm just you know really happy that I'm doing it so yeah I will show you because maybe you can see there is a, you can tell a difference between the skein colors they're all just like not pretty looking anymore and okay you, it's maybe hard to tell on the camera I do think this skein is slightly darker than this one and so that's why I considered or that's why I, I have decided to alternate skeins for this project but it's so easy and the stitch pattern also makes it easy to do because even though it's not plain stock in it, you just have to like, basically since there's, I'm alternating between two skeins, there's one skein that's just gonna do like the knit row and the other skein that's going to do like the ribbing. So yeah, so that's how it's looking so far. I'm really excited again for this finished object and it's gonna be just in time for warmer weather. Yeah, also this is ripped, so I feel like it maybe looks a little weird and small right now, but I am hopeful that it will stretch out. It will, like I did try it on and it seems fine. So after blocking, it should it should be look, look a little bit better or more like what the final product is gonna be, you know? So yeah, so just working on that. It's using fingering weight yarn on us6 needles and so the knitting on this has been flying by like it's been really fast so i'm not worried about this i'm not worried about finish finishing this at all so thumbs up for this one so far and yeah also i did want to mention like it's not that important but i have these like cords to put you know your live stitches on when you have like sleeves on hold or something and I bought I bought like that bar record set that has like basically one really long cord that is kind of used for like to put the body on hold and then there's two shorter ones that are kind of used for the sleeves and since I have two of the sleeve ones on my stry right now I was like how am I going to put the sleeves for this one on hold? Because I really would pref I prefer to have used these cords to put stitches on hold rather than like have to put like, what is it called? Like, you know, scrap pieces of yarn through. So I decided, but I had the body cord, like the one that's really long. And so I just decided it's so long that I can, I put one sleeve on and I just kind of like wrapped it around and put the second sleeve on. So if you're ever also in the same situation as me, like this could work potentially. Just have to make sure that you don't accidentally like yank one of these or like it gets caught on something and it just pulls it out because then it'll pull out all, all of the stitches. But so, so far I've been good. But yeah, I kind of just keep checking on the cords once in a while to make sure none of them got like really 
close to coming off. But yeah, so this is the Lunar Tea using the Pig the Duty yarn. It is so cute. Love the name, love the color. Okay, and that is all for the works in progress. And last time I talked to you all, I was talking about kind of like my skating journey, my ice skating journey. And so, yeah, just thought maybe sometimes if I feel like talking about it, I will add it to this end section of the video. And so, yeah, if you're not interested at all, don't worry about it. Feel free to skip it. Thank you so much for watching, like, the yarn section of this video. But, yeah, so my other hobby besides knitting is ice skating. I do skate about four times a week, and I have lessons, private lessons, two times a week. So it's, you know, it's, I think for people who don't skate, it seems like a lot of skating to do. But if you're like training and stuff, it it's, you know, I could skate more, but as an adult and, you know, when you have a job, you know, a full-time job and other things, you know, it, it, it is this, it is a lot of time to take out of your day to do, but I love it. And so that's kind of what I've been doing, but just wanted to give a little section here to talk about, like, I do have a competition later tonight as I am filming this. So by the time this goes up on YouTube, it'll be done and hopefully, you know, everything goes okay. But yeah, I do feel, I was kind of like, what, will I be too nervous to film a video today if I have a competition in like, I don't know, five hours from now? But I think this is good because I had to wake up. So I have, and I... Sorry if this, is, again, I'm like repeating myself, but there is practice ice, a thing called practice ice usually on the day of your competition so that you can, you get 20 minutes to kind of go on the ice, kind of like warm up some stuff before like actual competition time because you don't get to skate that much before competition. So, I mean, it's, when it's your time to compete, like you usually have a group and you just get, at least for my level, you only get three minutes on the ice with your group to warm up before you actually have to go and compete. So this practice ice time is really nice. I usually, even if I don't officially sign up for practice ice, I usually like to make sure I get to a rink on the day of competition for like, you know, again, 20 or 30 minutes just to kind of like go through and just feel warmed up. And anyway, that's just to say that like this morning, my practice ice time was at 6.50 in the morning. So, and that is when like you are on the ice, 6.50, which meant I, have, I had to get to the rink at like, I did get to a rink at like 6.20 in the morning, which is just extra early for me. But I was nervous enough that I didn't really feel that tired waking up. Like, I think I was just so nervous that I was like, ooh, okay. So anyway, that was fine. It went a lot better than two weeks ago when I had my first competition of the year. So I feel pretty okay. And but yeah, so my competition is actually way later in the day. It's at 7, pretty much at like 7 p.m. So I have so much time to kill in between, but you can't really like do much in between because you don't want to like go out and do an activity that, I don't know, you could get hurt. Not, not that anyone's really kind of, I, don't, I mean, you know, it's, anyway. You kind of just want to make sure that you stay calm throughout the day. At least for me, I have to try and stay calm. But I decided to take a nap. I tried to take a nap because I was like skating and being at a rink from 6.50 and having to wait all the way until like 7 something p.m. to skate is just kind of like a lot. And I might be tired. And so I tried to take a nap. It took, I think it was like 30 minutes. But I, I tried. So that's that. And then... I did some knitting, and as I've said, my stripy turtle tank has been my go-to knitting from two days ago and this morning, and so that's why I finished it so fast. It was my stress relief knitting for my skating competition, and yeah, so I've just, you know, again, have so much time to kill that I, it's a perfect, making this podcast episode is a perfect way for me to not only kill time, but like, you know, something I like to do helps keep me calm 
and anyway, so that's, yeah, so that's kind of just all I wanted to say, so thank you to those who wish me luck. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I always get so nervous, you know, my coach always tells me, like, you know, you are prepared, your run-throughs lately have been, you know, as good as they have been, and yeah, I'm prepared, I practiced, should be fine, so fingers crossed, everything kind of goes okay. For me, I don't know if any of you have also done either like, I guess a competitive thing or something like that, but I have found lately that at competitions, I feel way more relaxed when I have friends around, like other skating friends who are like also competing. Like I definitely, as a kid, I feel like I was very competitive. I didn't think I was, but when I look back, like, I always wanted to be first. I always wanted to, but, you know, it was mostly because I wanted to do my best. But at the same time, you know, I was always wanting to be first. I always felt kind of like this internal, like, pressure to just want to be first. And I didn't do sports when I was younger, but for me, that was, like, music. Like, I always wanted to be, like, first chair, you know? So... And, you know, always get A's and stuff like that for grades. But as an adult, and especially for skating, I feel so much less pressure. Like, I'm, I'm almost glad that I started figure skating as an adult because I feel like the adults who are skating are doing it purely because they love to skate and no other kind of, like, pressure of having to place, having to get good scores, having to beat everyone in your group. So I very much feel like, even though I'm nervous to, to perform at these competitions, I'm not really nervous like, oh, I'm not gonna place or I'm not gonna get first place. I just wanna make sure that I do what I know I can do. But I just feel so much happier that there are people who are like doing this because they love it and that we can all just like support each other. And, you know, sure, we are technically competing against each other, but I genuinely feel just like happy that we're all there and that we're doing the thing that we like to do. So it's just been, yeah, just been really good. It's like, I feel so happy I feel like I'm reflecting now so sorry this is like a rant but like I just feel really happy that like I found skating you know skating was my childhood dream and now it's you know finally kind of like a thing and that I found friends through skating and then of course all of the knitting I cannot would would not have imagined that knitting would have taken me to this place where I have like a knitting friend group and knit nights and like making YouTube podcast videos for knitting. Like it's just crazy in like the best way and that everyone's so friendly and just, just makes me so happy. Community is so great. I love watching knitting podcasts and so I feel extra special that I also get to make these knitting podcasts so yeah now we're getting like all sappy but okay I will end the video here for today thank you so so much for watching I hope that you are having a great day I hope you're not as nervous as me for an upcoming ice skating competition but as always let me know what you are working on if you're working on something while watching this video let me know in the comments down below. Again, I love hearing your projects like the pattern and the yarn. And feel free to follow me on Instagram. The, my Instagram name is Airy Knits. It's the same name as this podcast. Also feel free to subscribe to this channel if you would like to subscribe. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you get lots of knitting done and that you are enjoying your knitting and yeah again make sure you stretch your hands i feel like i've been forgetting to say that lately in podcasts but now i as i mentioned the the strike cardigan was kind of bringing up some pain again anyway 
just make sure you stretch out, take some breaks sometimes so that you can knit forever and ever. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.